before he came here tonight, I had a nice written speech about Thanksgiving. And then I got a phone call about one of our newly elected members who's not feeling very well. Mr. Neville, I've had the privilege of serving with him. And he's okay. But I'm asking us all to remember Tim Neville tonight and offer our prayers to Tim that he gets better pretty quick, pretty quick. So for Tim Neville, Tim, get better. I pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. Okay, in the event of an emergency or a fire, there's emergency exits to the rear of the chamber or downstairs to my left and out to the parking lot. Um, now we have the uh, oath of office for everyone, please. Suzanne? Tina M. LeBlanc, Mike Ludwig, Timothy Neville, who was absent and who will come later, sorry about that, Ray Peabody, Tom Serrard, Stacy Thurston, and Lori Unguire. Do you all solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm that you will faithfully discharge according to law your duties as a member of the Board of Education for the Town of Enfield to the best of your ability, so help you God or upon penalty of perjury? I do. So do. Okay. Congratulations to you all. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Kathy, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Cruzell? Mr. Peabody? Present. Mrs. Ungeyer? Here. Mr. Ludwig? Here. Mr. Grady? Mrs. LeBlanc? Here. Mr. Neville? Mrs. Thurston? Here. Mr. Serrard? Here. Um, Mr. Cruzell, now that we have a quorum present and they have been accounted for, Mr. Cruzell will be phoning in. Again. Present. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Krizel. Now I'm moving on to the election of the officers. Do I have any nomination for chairperson of the Board of Education? I nominate Tom Serrard for chairperson of the Board of Education. Do we have any seconds? I second. Motion made by Mr. Ludwig, seconded by Ms. Ungeyer. Do I have any other nominations? Do I have any other nominations? I move nominations be closed. Nominations or motions move to be closed. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Ludwig, seconded by Mr. Peabody. All in favor, show of hands. Nominations are now closed. Those in favor of appointing Tom Serrard to the chairmanship, raise your hands. Those opposed? Mr. Cruzel, what do you say, what say you? I, I, I raise my hand. Very good. <laughs> Any abstentions? None. Thank you very much. Moving on, Vice Chairperson of the Board of Education. Do I have any nominations for the Vice Chairperson of the Board of Education? I have a nomination. Ms. Langar. I nominate Mike Ludwig. <clears throat> nominated by Ms. Do I have a second? Second. Nominated by Ms. Langar, second by Mr. Ludwig. Do we have any other nominations? Peabody. Or, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Peabody, Mike's mistake. Do we have any other nominations? Do we have any other nominations? Do I have a motion to close nominations? So move. Sorry. Motion made by Ms. Thurston. Second. Seconded by Mr. Peabody. All in favor of Mr. Ludwig being the Vice Chairman of the Board of Education, show of hands. Mr. Cruzel, what say you? Did you raise your hand, Walter? Yes, I did four. Very good. Congratulations, Mr. Ludwig. Thank you. Nomination for Secretary of the Board of Education. I'd like there. to nominate Tina LeBlanc. Second. Nominated by Mr. Peabody, seconded by Ms. Thurston. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Sensing none, do I have a motion? So moved. Motion not to, to close nominations. Do I have a second? Second. Second made by Ms. Thurston, made by Mr. Peabody, seconded by Ms. Thurston. All in favor of Ms. LeBlanc assuming the role of Secretary of the Board of Ed? Four. Thank you, Mr. Cruzel. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Congratulations, Ms. LeBlanc. Thank you.
Service recognition awards to outgoing members. Mr. Janitis, are you present? Yes. Come on up, Peter. In recognition for all of your hard work and all of your dedicated service to the Board of Education. We stand up, right? Thank you. Stand up. I'd also like to thank Mr. David Waller for his service as the last term as our, chair, as our Vice Chairman. Dr. Schumann, Board of Ed guests. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight we welcome John Daig, our K-12 STEAM Science and Technology Education Coordinator, along with JFK Technology Teacher Adam Mitchell, and they brought three of our students with you. And they're going to talk a little bit about the work they're doing in conjunction with a partnership with this Nuntuck Community College. So gentlemen and gentlemen, come on up. Oh, is it going up now? All right. So just use the microphone. All right. Good. Uh, Enfield Public Schools is in a second year of a partnership with his Nuntuck Community College. Uh, the partnership is designed to span grades seven through twelve. Uh, we began last year rolling out a program in seventh and eighth grade, in which as Nuntuck staff come in two days a week in order to work with students to teach them 3D design and advanced manufacturing skills. Right in the seventh and eighth grade, we're working with additive manufacturing. So what you might hear of is 3D <laughs> printing, which is going to be one of the major technologies going forward in manufacturing. The program is designed to extend all the way through high school. And hopefully next year, we'll be rolling out new courses at It'll be partnership courses at Enfield High School, starting with the robotics and followed by the materials processing class. The idea of the program is that after the students have exposure in grades 7 through 10, they'll have opportunities to explore up to five different majors at Nuntuck Community College, and they'll be able to receive a degree within one year of graduating high school, so an associate's degree in one of uh, several areas that include advanced manufacturing, welding technology, electromechanical, and uh, others that may become available as we continue the program. So tonight, Adam Mitchell's here with uh, Luca Manzi, Mason Richette, and Carson Strout, and they're gonna show some of the work that they've been doing in the eighth grade class uh, down at JFK that's uh, been possible because of the equipment and resources brought in at, as a result of this partnership. <laughs> Skull, so I can do Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cool. I think he did a skull. I want a skull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's pretty oh, cool. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> you get to play now? I want to put the picture in this too. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to take a picture and you're playing with it. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, we use a program called SolidWorks, and I made a Doctor Who logo, and this is basically what it looks like. A Maserati. This is a Maserati logo that I did. Um, it's pretty much like the other one, just different sketch. Did your dad supply the car? Hmm? Did your dad go supply the car for the logo one? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Um, so we use a picture as a guideline, and once you do that, and you outline it with tools that <coughs> aren't there, and... If you want, you can hit the plus and you can show them the sketch. <coughs> if I click, click on the sketch. Oh, okay. <coughs> so you can get a little bit of a look of the logo that they use to trace it. Background there. They use that as the reference. Thank you. <coughs> and. Oh, okay, the vehicles. Um, Make me I don't think my Maserati's open. Just show them, just show them the, uh, the, two, uh, the two ones that are open, okay? Oh, uh, Chris, yeah. Mason, you want to go with the tie advanced? Sure. For the TIE Advanced model that I made, I used this sketch, and it came out. There was a bunch of pieces involved in making it, and when you kind of put all the pieces together, you get come out with the final uh, product of what it ended up looking like, which was the model that we passed around. And it's kind of a difficult process, but it'd be much harder if we didn't have the program that we had. It definitely made it a lot easier because we could use pictures on the program or we could use actual pictures online as a reference and it would make it really easy to actually model them inside the program. So that was something very helpful. All right, so I made the Millennium Falcon and it took a little while to make and there's so many fine details that you have to use. But it came out pretty cool, and but it took so long, and there's this massive sketch tree that took, it's insane. But yeah, that's what I made. <coughs> so uh, this is, okay. This is the little circle things the, it's the little circle things on the um, on the side things. I na <laughs> <laughs> perfect name, <laughs> and it's just these. All of the names are pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I base for circles. I mean, but uh, <laughs> mostly what what they are 
is uh, different uh, pieces or different tools that you use to make the different parts of the models. So there's things like fillets, uh, extrudes, cut extrudes, which is cut extrudes are taking pieces from a whole. Extruding is taking a flat plane and turning it into something 3D. And fillets are, they're just all different ways to shape what you're making into the actual model that it's gonna end up being when you end up 3D printing it. So these little curvy edges, these are what the fillets look like. And there's also a chamfer which will make a more, ang more of an angle, which is what's on these. But then we have our nice little, uh, what's, where's our vent? Vents right here, right? The vents are right there. I know that. You almost just got it. All right. It's way down. It's down. Whatever, we'll go with these ones. So, there, to make this part, I used, I took the same sketch and I just copied and pasted it on top of each other. And I cut it, I cut into the base of the Millennium Falcon to get the depth, and then to extrude it, I just took the original sketch and print. I took the original sketch and that's what that is. So you're gonna end up starting with a uh, first piece. So originally what you, he, he had was um, a sketch of what it would look like and he sketched over a picture. Oh, these lines are just, they're there to help find something. And the lines were there to help something like measuring tools and stuff like that. And the yellow lines showed what it would look like after he extruded it to make it into a 3D model. Stop moving the camera. I'm showing. <laughs> so what, once he extruded it, he used all the other features on top of it to create the model that he made. Oh, very good. This was a stormtrooper helmet that I had made originally as one of my first project projects. So we had made we had started out by trying to sketch different types of things. We had an easy, medium, and hard. And this one I believe I chose for my hard one because there were so many things that I had to sketch, but the model itself was easy because all you had to do was extrude it out. Because as you can see over here in the tree, there's only three things. All I had to do was take the original sketch, just using all the tools to sketch around the picture. I had to sketch around the picture. And then I had to extrude it out. And it, I put it on a surface so that when it came out, it only extruded certain parts. And then that made it easier for me to use two different colors to make it look more realistic. It's more about working with what you have to get the product that you want. It, to get more advanced features, it's a little bit harder, but the concept is there. Like, all you have to do is use what the tools that they give you to, if it's not exactly what you want in the end, it's as close as you can get. And the three, when you make fine details, the 3D printers can't make the fine details perfectly. Like on my Millennium Falcon, there's so many tiny little fine details that are there and the printer can't show that very well because they're so small. Any other ones? I wanted to show the Maserati, but I think, Howard, can you open here? No, that's the logo. Go to the folder. Go to the logo. We'll explain the part. Go to the Maserati. Not the so also, um, we have an, an instructor from As Nuntuck once a week who talks to us and helps us with the SolidWorks program when we're having difficulties. And As Nuntuck actually provided us with five 3D printers and a yearly SolidWorks subscription. We have a person who comes in. Did you already tell them about that? Yeah. yeah so there's, well, who, who comes in is, his name is Mr. Coffing. He comes in and he helps us out with uh, all the stuff that we're, we do in class, and he helps out with the printers that they've provided for us, and he also provides other information, so he almost takes over the class, but he add, adds some information we wouldn't have known about if he hadn't been there. So he's a co-teacher. He's a co-teacher, essentially, yes. Um, so this is the drawing I did of the car, and 
um, tell them about the features that weren't there. Oh yeah. Um, in the front, as you can see on the actual final product, this logo did not show up. But um, and yeah, the mirrors also did fall off. I'm not sure if it was during the print, but um, the wheels actually took a very long time because you have to outline them individually. All these little, like right here, um, all the little shapes, I guess. And <clears throat> after you cut extrude it, you have to worry about how it's going to connect to the car. And the, so, the thing yeah. about the 3D printers is they can't build on nothing, so they either have to make supports or they're just going to not exactly give you the result that you want. It's, gonna, like, droop it's down. just going to make pasta if it's not. <laughs> it's going to just put the plastic on nothing because it thinks that there should be something there that it's building on, but there isn't. So uh, what's really helpful about the... Um, the uh, 3D printers that they provided us were MakerBots in the MakerBot software, which creates the files that the 3D <coughs> printer reads and then prints out, is that it helps us um, put on the supports. And it's a very high quality printer. It's very expensive, it's, but it's good for what it does. Um, should we move on to the electronics? The yeah. Arduinos? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, so <coughs> right here is an <coughs> RGB LED, and with an RGB LED, it could be all different. It could be three different colors. It could be red, green, or blue. And then, it, if you make the right amount of, it'll be. This is the wrong one. <laughs> if you mix the right colors, you can get different colors. But if basically you have a line of code that'll tell the light to make it Tell red, green, or blue. And when you upload that to the Arduino, it'll tell you exactly, it'll tell the LED exactly how much it's going to be. This is a really fun experience because we get to learn a lot about the coding that goes into making the machines, as well as doing the electronics to connect the LED to this thing called a breadboard, which connects all the wires, and to the actual Arduino, which um, takes the code and turns it into something that the LED knows what to do. On the Arduino, you have all of these pins that you plug in your wires into, and if it's not grounded, your LED is not going to work properly, and you have to have them, the pins in the right spot, because when you code it, you have to tell the LEDs. You have, on this, there's, there's all these different prongs on here, and if you don't tell, th say this is the blue prong, and if you assign that to the, the, the maybe the 10 on the, uh, for the red on the Arduino, and on you, when you code it, the it's supposed to be the eight pin, and you have it on the ten pin, then it's not going to work properly. Now you I could keep it with that constant delay of five seconds in between, but nobody likes it being so slow. So you could make it go really, really fast. So sometimes we take code off of the internet, and we. Uh, use what we have and we try to make it our own and personalize it and make it different. So, so sometimes we'll take code off the internet that tells it to do a certain pattern and then we'll change it to do the same pattern but with different colors. And it's a fun experience to learn how all the wires go together because uh, there's tons of jobs that involve electrical wiring and things like that so it's great experience for later on in life. Now we have okay, yeah, yeah. we have these ten LEDs, and they're supposed to resemble the Knight Rider's car on the front of his car. Huh? But they're kind of spread out, so nice. yeah, they're a little Very spread nice. out. We learn about different types of electronic units. Like not only do we use LED and code, we use things like uh, light sensors, uh, motion sensors Buttons. by using stuff like. Uh, sonic pings to send out and receive the sonic pings and detect distance. We use things like buttons to create circuits, turn them on and off, that kind of thing. Uh, it's really fun and it's fun to learn as well. Oh yeah, that's the robot. So 
we have the final project that we, so half the year we do 3D modeling on SolidWorks and we use, well, this Arduino in electronics. And then the other half of the year we're doing a final project. This is what my final project is and I'm building a rover. The piece on the front right here is a motion sensor. And a uh, distance sensor, not a motion sensor, sorry. But this is just an example of the all the kinds of things we can use for this. And for this, we'd have to pull the code off of the internet, off of the website that we're using, which is Instructables. So we'd have to pull it off of the internet because you can't write it all by hand. It'd take too long and it's a little complicated. The great thing about learning about the electronics and the 3D printing is sometimes in our final project, we're incorporating all that we learned and we're putting it together, like we're making casings for things, and then we're combining the electronics to put them together and make something personalized that maybe we took the idea from the internet, but we made it our own. So for the final project, a lot of people do a nightlight, and I'm doing a nightlight. It's the TARDIS from Doctor Who. It's a time machine, and it has an LED inside. So you 3D print a shell for it, but it's still the electronics inside. So you do both at the same time, and it's really fun. So basically to make the LED turn on in, when there's dark, there's a sensor, the light sensor, there's an LDR sensor that when it, you have it set to a certain light level and when it goes below that light level, it'll do whatever you want it to. And in, our, in a nightlight's case, it's turning the LED on. So when it goes below a certain light level, it'll turn the LED on. That's, that's pretty basically it for us. <laughs> <laughs> You know, guys, I've seen a lot of presentations by 42-year-olds, and i got to tell you, for 12-year-olds, you guys blew those guys out of the water. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great good job. Great job. Any Thank comments you. or questions from the board? Thanks, guys. You guys did awesome. Thank you. And thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming, guys. That was, that was really cool. That was just... <laughs> You know, I have the most fun of anyone in the building. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, use a 3D printer to take uh, cars, automotive, and, and the airline, and the airplane issue, do um, like World War II aircraft, because you can't find the parts anymore. So you scan the blueprint and they use the same technology. Tom, do we need to keep Walter on or go and let him go? Wait for building committee report? Yeah, wait for building committee report. Okay. Um, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have our student representative from Enfield High here, and then we'll get into your report. Uh, Enfield High has been extremely busy over the last couple weeks. Uh, girls soccer went to finals, and even though they didn't win, they all played extremely well. Um, packing and moving has been <coughs> tough for the teachers trying to teach and get around all of the boxes, uh, but we've all gotten packed up, everything is out of the rooms, and we're ready to move into the new building. And we have a bunch of fundraisers planned coming up. We had one today for construction day. And we sold everything that we bought, all of the plastic hats that we bought, to raise money for a former student who's sick. And we plan on having more coming up. Thank you. Dr. Schumer. A couple other things. Uh, the Thanksgiving break for students and staff began this afternoon. School will be closed for students and staff through Sunday. Uh, the staff will return on Monday for professional development. The students return to school um, a week from today on Tuesday morning. Um, your grants report and your personnel report are both in your packet, and I have two additional items for you. First of all is one from the uh, law firm of Shipman and Goodwin, they're offering a what every school board member should go, a review of legal rights and responsibilities. Uh, it's being offered in December. If anyone would like to attend, you've got a two-sided document there. Uh, just let us know, let, let Kathy know, and we will get you registered. Uh, I think they'd like to have us registered. Or the seats are, there's 50 seats available. When I called this afternoon, there was still about 25 seats open. So if anyone would like to attend that, uh, let us know as, uh, sooner than later, and we'll, uh, we'll put the registration form in for you. And second, we received a document uh, from uh, uh, um, to address to all board members. So Mr. Director is going to bring them around. There's one for each of you. Um, and so we just want to make sure you got those. They came to uh, central office. And I will be ready to give you an update on the transition just in a little bit when we get to unfinished business.
This is so mess. Okay, audiences, none. Board member comments. Is the boy? Uh, first, I would like to thank um, everyone who came out and voted on Election Day. We had um, a big turnout, which I don't know that all of us were expecting. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to get to serve the Town of Enfield and the Board of Education for the next two years. Um, we have a lot of exciting times coming up with the opening of the new high school and um, just transitioning the two high schools together. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was able to go to the Kyla's Crusaders walk um, for Kyla Percornia, a former student who is fighting cancer. Um, it was an event in Suffield, and there were so many former students and teachers and administrators from the town of Enfield there to support her. Um, and she was also um, collecting donations for children at the CCMC uh, for a Christmas party for the, the children there, which is a um, really wonderful um, accomplishment. Um, also, I was able to be part of the girls, um, Enfield High girls um, soccer journey. Um, they made it to second in the state. Um, I put on Facebook, they're second in the state, but they're first in our hearts. They fought really hard. Um, they had a new coach. Um, I don't think they were expected to go as far as they did, and they fought really hard to get there. And I'm proud to know a lot of those girls and watch them grow up and to be these soccer players. So that was exciting. And I want to wish everybody a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Ms. Lank. Ms. Thurston. Mr. Cruzel. Yes. Do you have any comments? I, I have a few. I have many comments, but I'm going to save them for when I'm there live because over Memorex is just not working. So. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Cruzel. Good morning. I will present my comments at the next meeting. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Cruzel. Mr. Peabody. Yes. I'd like to add my congratulations to the Enfield School uh, High School soccer team. Uh, I did get to one of the games, part of it, uh, this year, and boy, they, they played hard and they played smart. And that's a reflection of their coach, uh, uh, Katie Batista. Um, I've known her for quite some time, and she's an excellent soccer mind, an excellent person, and an excellent teacher. So congratulations uh, to Ms. Batista. Um, on Election Day, I got reunited with an old friend. And uh, we were talking, we were both in the Boy Scouts together, and her son, Daniel, Daniel Martin, uh, I think he's Enfield's newest PhD. He graduated from Enfield High 2009, and he's a PhD in, of all things, data sciences, which is, you know, everybody knows me, it's near and dear to my heart. So he's out doing well, productive, he has a job just outside of Boston. So congratulations, well done to uh, Daniel Martin. Um, I want to thank everyone for uh, their support during the election season. Um, especially our chairman, Marianne Turner. Thank you for getting me through it without any problems. Um, <clears throat> misfires, you know me, Tina. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, thanks very much, and uh, I look forward to the challenges that we have this year. We have a number of them, and we'll be working hard with uh, our town council counterparts and uh, all sorts of folks to make sure that the infield school system is the very best that it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. Ms. Ungar. I just wanted to thank all the Enfield residents for re-electing me. Um, I'm very happy to be here and to work hard for you and to serve you. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be here, and I don't take it lightly. I really appreciate it. I also wanted to thank <clears throat> my husband, John, who's sitting in the audience, um, for all his support, and I'd like to thank Mary Ann Turner for her support as well. Um, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope the kids all really enjoy their time off. Thank you, Ms. Ungar. Mr. Ludwig. I'm just going to be brief. Um... I was, my, uh, I was also at the final game on Saturday, and our team played great. And I think the other thing, too, is Enfield travels very well. I mean, the kids showed up, did a great job. They were loud. They cheered for the team. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, I hope we can make it back next year, because my daughter does play on the team, along with Tina's daughter. So it was very exciting to be a part of. And again, I, I encourage people, if you know a friend or if you have a daughter or son, go to the games because I tell you, it was really exciting to be there on Saturday. Kids played great, just didn't go our way. But uh, again, I think it was a really great atmosphere. Thank everyone for their support through the election. I look forward to serving folks on the Enfield Board of Education. Uh, this is, again, an exciting time. I got to see uh, the, the new wing that will the students will be moving in after Thanksgiving. And I just want to say it looks fantastic. And I think folks are going to be pleased 
with the first step of what will be a you know year-long journey when it comes to moving folks into one high school. But I think the folks did a really good job in that wing, and it's it, it really and if you not only that the cafeteria, uh, folks who've been in college, the cafe style cafeteria. I think folks are going to be really pleased when they see you know I think the, you know my daughter really liked it, so she's in high school, so I hope that's a good endorsement. And um, again, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and I look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Good. Um, I'd like to start by, again, mimicking my colleagues on the board and, and Enfield High School girls soccer team, you guys rock. You guys are awesome. Uh, as Tina will, and will probably tell you, I was texting her saying, how they doing? How they doing? <laughs> and, and rooting for you. And, 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 and you guys have every reason to be proud. You make us all proud. Um, I want to thank everyone that, for coming out tonight. I also want to thank those of, uh, who supported us uh, to get us here. I want to thank my colleagues for their continued support. I know that we're going to hit the ground running. I have a very good team here. Um, we're going to do wonderfully. We're going to do wonderfully. I want to thank my wife. I want to thank my kids for allowing me to do this for another term. I want to thank um, my supporters out there. But more importantly, I want to thank Marianne Turner. Without Marianne, none of this would be possible for us to, to be sitting up here. She's a hard worker. She really cares about Enfield, and she cares about the people in Enfield. She deserves all the credit in the world. Um, uh, Thanks to everyone, and have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. Unfinished business. Uh, transition update. Dr. Schumann. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are just over three years from the referendum in which the community fully supported the merger of two high schools into one. And this is a very important milestone weekend. This afternoon, we began moving things out of the existing Enfield High School and into the new steam wing, which is uh, built and ready for us to go into. I met with Amar, the building construction manager today. He has four out of seven sign-offs for the CO that he will need before we can go in on Tuesday. He's hoping to have the rest of the sign-offs done tomorrow. He's still working with the engineering department, the fire department, and the building department. When he gets the seven sign-offs, then we will have our CO, and we can uh, occupy that building come next Tuesday. He guarantees me whatever it takes, we will have our CO to go in there on Tuesday. Uh, over the next several days, the crews, the moving crew was in there. They had almost the entire D-wing <laughs> empty today by 1 o'clock this afternoon, and they will be working uh, through the day tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then working with our staff on Monday to get everything unpackaged and ready for the students to return on Tuesday. So this is a, a huge milestone. It's a big step forward. It's something we've all been waiting for. I know some of you have seen the building, and everyone will get a chance to walk through it and experience it uh, come Tuesday morning. So the good news is we are right where we're supposed to be and we're moving forward. Uh, we did tweet out a picture this afternoon of the new cafeteria. It's complete. The new tables have been installed. It looks really cool in there. So yeah, that's something else nice. you want to go see when you get a chance. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Very cool. Thank you, Dr. Schumann. Board committee reports. Um, the chairman of the curriculum committee is not here. So we'll be postponing that report until he is better. Um, building committee. Walter, do you have anything? Didn't we skip the board? No, just, just, just uh, echoing what Oh, Dr. wait. Time. I made a mistake. Let me back up. Um, new business board committee liaison appointments. Um, tonight, I'm sorry, by my mistake. I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, we're going to be naming the chairman of the big committees right now. Um, okay. Mr. Peabody, uh, chairman of finance. Mr. Ludwig. Chairman of Policy, mm -hmm. Mr. Neville, Chairman of Curriculum, um, and uh, I think that's the big ones for now. The rest of them will keep you posted. We have to meet. So, mm -hmm. okay. Now we can go on. Sorry about the the interruption there. Um, curriculum committee is on. And, okay, Walter, go ahead. Building committee. Sorry about that. Uh, I just want to echo uh, what Dr. Sugar said that. This is the biggest weekend of all right now. We're getting the move and thank the building committee for all their hard work to get to this point. And we'll just keep plugging away and getting, getting the uh, A-Wing, get the construction going on the A-Wing. Thank you, Mr. Cruzo. Thank you, Walter. There you go. Item number 16, approval of the minutes, regular meeting minutes, October 27th, 2015. Do I have a motion to approve by those members of the board? We have a motion by Ms. Ungar, second. second. All those in favor? 
Mikey can put your hands awesome. down. <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, you, you are, you're an you're abstention. <laughs> so you raise your hand for abstentions, yeah. Walter. I'm abstaining. Okay. Uh, approval of accounts and payroll. There's none. Correspondence and communications. We just received one, and we'll have to re review that. Audiences. Are there any audiences? No audiences. And no need for executive session. Ms. Thurston, can I have a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. Motion made by Ms. Thurston. Second. All in favor, show of hands. Meeting is adjourned. Walter. Happy